in chapter 9 control and regulation subtopic 9.1 nervous system the syllabus today i will be describing the characteristics of nerve impulse uh, make sure before you are viewing this video, you have already seen my three previous videos about resting potential, action potential, and transmission of impulse along an axon because the characteristics that I am going to explain uh, in today's video uh, are connected to what I have already explained in the previous videos. So, let's move on. There are only four characteristics for you to remember, so that's quite simple. The first characteristic is that impulse is electrical. Second characteristic is that impulse is unidirectional, meaning that it moves in only one direction. Thirdly, that the uh, potential of an impulse is constant. That is, for example, action potential is always at positive 40 millivolts. And the fourth characteristic is that the transmission speed of an impulse can be affected by external factors. So let's start off with characteristic one. The fact that impulse is electrical. Whenever we say electrical, what comes to mind is electricity. But electricity is physics. In biology, electrical is all about ions. So when we say an impulse, an electrical impulse, it is actually referring to the difference in the membrane potential between the tissue fluid and the exoplasm. So it is the difference in the amount of sodium ions and potassium ions that make the membrane either become negative or positive. That is the first characteristic. The second characteristic is that transmission of impulse is unidirectional, meaning that it is always in the direction from the cell body to the axon terminal. It is never in the opposite direction. Okay. The reason is actually because of two factors. One is related to the absolute refractory period and second is due to saltatory induction. Let me first explain absolute refractory period. To understand refractory period, we have to refer to our membrane potential graph. You should be quite familiar with this graph. I just refresh you. This line represents resting potential. This curve, this small curve, refers to threshold potential. And then as this line goes up, this is called as depolarization. The peak is action potential. Then the graph going down is repolarization. Then when we come to the curve here, we learn this curve as undershoot or hyperpolarization, after which it becomes polarized once again. Now, it is this part here that was previously introduced to you as undershoot and hyperpolarization, which now I shall introduce as the third keyword, refractory period. Now, this refractory period actually has two parts. The first part is known as the absolute refractory period, and the second part is known as the relative refractory period. Okay, let me carry on to explain the meaning of refractory period. You already know the location of the refractory period. Okay, now let's understand meaning of refractory period. Refractory period is the moment when a neuron does not transmit impulse. This is the neuron's resting time. The neuron will recover by generating new ATP and balancing the amount of ions in the axon so that it is ready to transmit a new set of impulse. This is just like our heart. Remember in a cardiac cycle, your arterial systole and ventricular systole will last 0.4 seconds altogether. Then your whole heart will go into a diastole for another 0.4 seconds. So all systems in our body need rest. Likewise, the axon also must rest. It cannot be always transmitting impulse. So that is 
the refractory period. Okay, so that's also the reason why, for example, sometimes, let's say you are doing a biology question, right? You are reading the question, but the answer is just not coming to your head. Uh, it could also be because your exons are probably in refractory period. Then after you take a break and then you rethink, the answer appears. All right. Now, the refractory period, as I said, is divided into the absolute and relative refractory period. What this means is, during the absolute refractory period, impulse can never, ever, ever be transmitted. Okay? Nothing in the whole wide world will make your exon transmit impulse during the absolute refractory period. This actually lasts for one millisecond. Now, the relative refractory period actually should not transmit an impulse. But in a special case where an emergency, like for example, an explosion is happening, uh, then your impulse will definitely transmit, uh, be transmitted by the axon. This is only when the stimulus is extremely strong in an emergency situation. So the relative refractory period uh, is uh, lasting for 5 milliseconds. So you can see generally your exon will have a six millisecond refractory period to recover. Okay. However, in an extreme emergency, five milliseconds can be used to continue transmitting impulse. Okay. But one millisecond is the minimum time given to our exons to rest. So you see during that resting period, the axon will never transmit an impulse. So that is why you see impulse will have to always move forward. It cannot move backward because of this refractory period. So it will help to prevent backflow of action potential. This is the first reason. We look at the second reason why impulse is unidirectional. This is related to the transmission of impulse along an axon by saltatory conduction in myelinated neurons and localized current in unmyelinated neurons. So in this axon, you can see I've divided into three parts to help explain. The center is where the impulse is present because you can see it is positively charged at 40 millivolts. That means the axon is depolarized and action potential has been achieved. Now, this impulse will only be able to move forward here to the part of the axon that is in resting potential, where it is polarized at negative 70 millivolts. The impulse will not move backwards because this part of the axon already transmitted its impulse to the middle part of the axon. So after transmitting, the, this part of the axon must be in refractory period to recover. So that is why it will be repolarizing. And before it can reach negative 70 millivolt, it will experience undershoot. And we have learned just now during the refractory period, no transmission of impulse will occur. So that's why the impulse has to move forward. It cannot move backward. Let me explain further. Okay, now the sodium ions that have accumulated in the stimulated part of the axon will now diffuse forward to the unstimulated part of the axon. So this way, the unstimulated part will obtain action potential and the impulse has been transmitted forward. Now, it won't go backward because the sodium ions in the tissue fluid will diffuse backward to the earlier part of the axon to help that part recover. So what happens now, the part that was originally depolarized will become repolarized. So now you can see the action potential will move forward. Positive 40 millivolt will be in front and the neurons or the axons that have parts of the axons that have already transmitted impulse will go back to becoming 
polarized. So this is evidence of how impulse is unidirectional. Move to the third characteristic that the potentials for an impulse are constant. Okay, now let's take the dog barking as a stimulus. Now, if you don't notice the dog barking, that means there is no stimulus and your resting potential will maintain at negative 70 millivolts. It won't uh, move, uh, fluctuate uh, and go down to negative uh, 90, then go up to negative 64. It will stay and maintain at negative 70. That's what we mean by constant. And now let's say you start hearing the dog barking, but you are not uh, too frightened about the dog, so you are not running yet. Uh, so that time what happens is you will notice your membrane potential does increase a little bit, but it remains below threshold. That means it may be uh, less than negative 55, maybe for example, it is at negative 56 millivolts. Okay, but if the dog, besides barking, starts showing its teeth and starts running towards you, that means the impulse now, the stimulus now is very strong. So then what happens is your membrane potential is definitely going to reach threshold. And once you reach threshold, immediately your action potential will be achieved. So the moment you have action potential of positive 40 millivolts, you will respond by running. Okay. Now it doesn't mean that if positive 40 millivolts, you will start running fast. But if it can shoot to positive 80 millivolts, you will start running like Usain Bolt or Superman. Okay. Whether you run fast or you run slow or you run at super speed, the action potential will stay at positive 40 millivolts. That is what we mean by constant intensity. And this action potential is based on what is known as an all or nothing law. That means if the stimulus is only up to say uh, 56, negative 56 millivolts, nothing is going to happen. So that is the nothing part of the law. But the moment your threshold potential of negative 55 millivolt is achieved, immediately you will get your action potential. There's never a case that you pass negative 55 millivolt and then it increase and the depolarization happen until say positive 20 and go down. No such thing. It will reach the maximum of positive 40. So that is the all part of the law. So as mentioned just now, when there is a stimulus and you respond to it, your action potential will have to reach this constant value of positive 40 millivolts. But what if the stimulus is very, very strong? For example, let's say you are being attacked by more than one dog. Okay, now in this case, we have six dogs. So does that mean now your action potential will be six times 40, that means increase to 240 millivolts? Okay, no, because as mentioned earlier, action potential has a constant intensity. So even if you are attacked by 600 dogs, your action potential is still going to be positive 40 millivolts. But you find that the frequency of which your axon will uh, achieve action potential will be much, much faster. Under a normal circumstance, because of the refractory period that I mentioned earlier, each action potential will have a gap of 6 milliseconds. But if when the stimulus is very strong, you find that the action potential will be able to be generated after one millisecond. So this increases frequency. Final characteristic that is the transmission speed. 
This picture shows you the myelinated neuron transmitting impulse much more quickly than the unmyelinated neuron. So clearly, myelination is a factor in determining transmission speed. Okay, that means if myelin present, transmission is faster. Second factor is the diameter of the axon. If the axon is thicker, it is found that it can transmit impulse faster. And the third is temperature based on Q10, which means that every increase of 10 degrees Celsius can double the speed at which impulse is transmitted. So this can explain why sometimes some of us happen to get answers faster than others. Okay, this is related to the transmission speed in our brain neurons. Okay, so those who happen to be able to think faster, okay, of course there are other factors, but based on this discussion, we can conclude their neurons probably have more myelination. Okay, now don't ask me what kind of food can increase your myelination. Eh? The presence of myelin is God's gift. Okay, so you can't do anything about that. Next is the diameter of axon. Now we can make a general conclusion that to be able to think faster, you probably have uh, axons that are thicker, but this is not true. Eh? The size of the axon in human is quite constant. Only animal that has a very thick axon is the giant squid. That's why it can swim very fast uh, from its captors. The okay, final is temperature. This also we can't do much eh, because our body temperature is already optimum at 37 degrees Celsius. You can't make it any hotter to increase the transmission speed. So in conclusion, there is nothing much you can do with the nerves that you are already gifted with. Okay? You just have to study and practice a lot to be able to come up with answers faster. With that, I have finished the description on characteristics of nerve impulses. I will see you soon in my next video. Bye-bye.